after a long week on the flight line. I thought I could relax with my beautiful wife when I got home on a Friday night. After 22 years of marriage, the three children are now living independently. It would be nice if we could go out for the evening. Hi, I'm David Collins, and I've been working the garbage shifts for United Airlines for 25 years. Now I'm the crew commander of the day shift and a mild-mannered ATEP mechanic. Day shift, labor and delivery, and charge nurse at Central Hospital was my wife, Judith Collins. We are both comfortably upper middle class, with me making slightly more than her, union, you know. I parked the pickup truck in its customary location inside the garage and shut the door behind me. It would be her Lincoln Navigator if we were going out in style. I would hop in my F-250 if it was a country or western night. My wife would choose the night, as she always did. In any case, I was unconcerned. When mom is happy, papa is overjoyed. Upon entering the kitchen from the garage, I sat down at the kitchen table and looked through the mail. I perceived a sound emanating from the upper floor, followed by the sound of small feet descending the staircase. As soon as my lovely 42-year-old wife stepped into the living room, she donned a shorty robe, which never failed to delight me. Oh, she cried out, you're early. I, uh, I didn't expect you for another hour or so. By checking the time, I saw that I was ahead of schedule, although it was not that early. What gives? Where are we going? Well, I am going out. I don't know what you are doing. All right. My weekend blew up. What do you mean you're going out? Where and with who? At the far end of the couch, there was a little overnight bag, and her gaze wandered to it. Oh, no. I'm going on a weekend date with William Strathmore. I'll be back home on Sunday night, and we can discuss it then. She said something like, What the heck? Hmm. My mind went. She turned and hurried upstairs, screaming. I have to finish getting ready. I could hear the door slam as she disappeared. You will, for sure, I exclaimed. My initial reaction was that I needed help. So I retrieved my cell phone and quickly called my daughter, assuring her that he would not accuse me of being the villain. Hey there, Dad. Doing well? She responded with a smile. Without thinking, I plundered her mom's purse and set it on the coffee table. It is urgent that you get over here immediately. With her brain injury, your mom is in need of our help. I must depart. Daddy? Hey, Dad. As I hung up, the next person on the line was my eldest son. He, too, received the identical message, which included the instructions to contact your brother and urge him to come here immediately. Dad, what the heck? He said, I proceeded to speed, dial her parents and repeat the same thing. Their surprise was matched by my own, and they even yelled at me as I hung up the phone. Credit cards, keys, a 12-pack of contacts. I had a vasectomy and a confirmation email from the Marriott Hotel in Kenilworth, room 703 to 703 to 710. The hell you will, I thought to myself. Judith's pocketbook spilled its regular contents. At her workplace, there was a pediatric surgeon named William Strathmore. I'd met him at the hospital Christmas party a few times in the previous five years, and I'd say he was slimy. His wife was stunningly beautiful, but I got the feeling she'd had an affair with him. I took her car keys and credit cards and stashed them in my pocket for future use. I grabbed her cell phone and unlocked it using her anniversary code and the number three, which stood for our children. Security. I obtained the emergency call list from her workplace and located the good doctor. His cell phone was useless, but his house phone might be answered if I dialed it. And after two rings, someone answered. She was still occupied upstairs. Oh, darling, I was anticipating your phone call. However, I am unfamiliar with the number. Does everything seem to be okay? Is this the Strathmore woman? I posed the question. Yes. Yes. Who is this, please? David Collins here. Your husband's place of employment is a hospital, 
and my wife is a charge nurse there. Are you familiar with my name? True, Dave. In fact, I do. Just a few nights ago, my husband and I were discussing you and your wife. When you called, I thought William was going to call. May I be of service to you? Is your husband away from the house? I posed the question. This is not the case. He is now attending a surgical conference in Boston. I hope everything is fine. I don't know what to say to you, Mrs. Ez. Strathmore, but I don't believe he is. My wife just told me that she was planning a weekend getaway to the Kenilworth Marriott that would conclude on Sunday night, and I immediately had an argument with her. Then what? Woodoff, are you trying to say? It seems like someone is trying to deceive us. The reservation of seven adjacent rooms on the seventh floor from today through Monday has been confirmed via email. Yes, Mr. Collins, I have your number. Permit me to return your call. I got sick of this nonsense and checked the emergency call list, which led me to the cell phone number of Corinne Adams, the hospital's head of human resources. I knew her. She and my wife were close friends, and I knew her husband, a police detective sergeant. I called her cell and she answered almost immediately. Can I say hello? This is who? Over my shoulder, I heard her say, Oh, man. Corinna, this is David Collins, Judith's husband. Indeed, Dave. How may I be of service to you? It certainly frightened them. I think there are some improprieties going on between Dr. Strathmore and my wife, and I wanted investigated and stopped. Sorry, Dave, but right now I just can't talk. Click. I'm leaving. Wow, that was strange. I answered Judith's phone on the third ring, my stomach in knots, because the caller began speaking almost immediately after I answered. Judith, he knows. He knows. Urgently. What comments made you make to him? Later on, I rained it down on her. Not everything, Corinne. But I'm getting closer. What was most illuminating was the screaming gasp for air coming from the opposite end. Goodbye. I retrieved her home phone number and called it right away. A man picked up after four rings. Look, I don't want to upgrade my cable service. Jerry, it sounds like you're having a bad day. Me. Me. Who am I? Dave Collins, Judith's husband. Really? I only get sales calls. Hi, Dave. Corinne? Is she home? No. This weekend I'll be babysitting. Down in Philadelphia, Corinne is attending a hospital. Sponsored team, building weekend. Just why are you inquiring? As I calmed myself, I spilled the beans on all I had discovered and suspected, and I suspect there are more than the three of them involved. Are you thinking the same things I am thinking? I asked, my voice cut off. I am utterly bewildered, except for one thing, though. Even if I end up in jail, she isn't leaving tonight. If I learn anything, I will let you know. Stop being a complete moron. The wheels were whirling and Jerry was a police officer. As Judith down the stairs, she seemed as if she were a wealthy call lady. Her red silk sheath dress revealed cleavage that reached nearly her waist and split down the right side, reaching mid-thigh. Judith noticed her pocketbook lying on the table. What on earth? I said, Oh, no you don't, as she began to gather up my belongings. I had to leave, and you dumped them all? Just shut up and sit down. You're not going anywhere. You don't own me, she spat out in a terrified voice. Whatever I want to do, I can do. Can you confirm that? Now I can too. How about this? She screamed and shouted, My dress? As I suddenly tore her dress's plunged neckline downwards, exposing her open cup bra, French lace garter belt, and lace top smoky gray seamed stockings. It is not your dress, you skank. I got it, and the majority of your underwear for our 25th wedding anniversary. You aren't going anywhere with that dress tonight. My phone then started ringing. Hello, David Collins. 
Mary Strathmore here. You were correct, and I'm sorry to break it to you. I reported the car stolen to the police. The deed was registered in my name, and I had purchased it on his behalf. Roughly five minutes ago, they detained him. His justification for stealing my car was his assertion that he was my spouse. They contacted me from the location of the traffic stop and relayed his words to me, she recalled while laughing through a strain in her voice. His status as my spouse. When I informed the police that my spouse couldn't be in Boston at the same time, I could still hear him in the background. The idiot demanded legal representation after he gulped for air. Go down and clean up the mess. I must. The vehicle was seized and he was taken into custody. I will be heading for your wife next. As soon as I recognized the caller, we went on speakerphone. David, what have you done? cried Judith in shock. Get out. At, at that same moment, my children burst through the front door. Father, what's going on? Mother, are you okay? The eldest son, Dave Jr. Uh, stated. In a flash, my daughter Haley was at her mother's side. Are you all right, mother? What happened to your dress? Your father tore it up. With murder on their minds? Everyone looked at me. This was not going to intimidate me. The entrance door was shut by Michael, the second son. What the hell, mom? What did you do? Tell them why, Judith. Go ahead. Why do you have a 12-pack of Trojan condors in your purse? Are you going to make water balloons, or what? I am utterly confused about their origin. They do not belong to me, Judith whispered under her breath. And where were you going? A weekend of sexual excess without your husband. Isn't that what you had in mind? I can do what I want to. It's my body. Judith understood her mistake the moment it was published. In the presence of her offspring, said with a lower volume. Well, I can. Dave, who was still quite young, rolled his eyes and headed for the kitchen to get a drink. He came back a little while later bearing an envelope. In a disdainful expression, he said, Here, Dad, it's addressed to you. He then turned to his mother. The remnants of Judith's garment tumbled to the floor as she screamed and rose from the couch. She called out, Don't read that. Because her mother lacked modesty, Haley hurried to assist her. Shut up, Judith, and sit back down. I told you. The words, my beloved husband, my sister is caring for mother and needs some help greeted me as I opened the letter. I will spend the weekend with them and return home on Monday night. Warm regards, Judith. The children exchanged puzzled glances, clearly unsure of how to respond. Before she confronted me, I discovered she had written the note. Her collapse would be caused by her bewilderment and fear. The front doorbell rang, and Judith's parents burst in before Michael. The second son could open it, as if destiny were munching on popcorn and watching this spectacle. Judith, are you okay? Her mother said, while her father yelled out, What's going on here? Judith didzed off. Hi, Mom and Dad. Welcome to Storm Central. Your daughter just managed to destroy our marriage and probably ruin her life and career, I spat out. While her dad was administering a slow burn, my daughter and her mother were attempting to revive Judith. As I filled them in on what had happened, the mood dipped farther and lower. Judith also came over at that point to take a look around. Her pleas to her mother for assistance were filled with hysteria. Hell, you want help? How about we call your sister for help? You were going to help her with your mother. Maybe she can return the favor. I then gave the note to her father and called her sister. The phone rang as he was reading it. Hello? Is this David? Yes, Mavis. How's it going? How is mom doing? Is she all right? Oh, yes. She's doing fine. Judith is really a big help. I don't know what I would have done without her. Please, would it be possible for me to speak with her? I politely approached her. Oh, well, she's busy right now. How about if I have her call you back in a little bit? Snarling at her other daughter, 
Mom snatched the phone. You manipulative dweeb. That won't be needed. Mother? You? As Judith lost it once more, she collapsed to the floor, her children and parents watching helplessly. Her sister's hysteria was audible as she yelled, No need to inquire about my health ever again, Mavis. In the middle of her second daughter's choked cries, she stopped the call. At around the same moment, my phone rang once more. Can I say hello? I responded. The man named David? This is Jerry. I felt the same way you did. You were correct. For all seven rooms at the Marriott, I obtained a search warrant. We discovered 12 more people during our raid, which was based on the missing persons warrant that I had swore out. Everyone, even my wife, three male physicians, four female physicians, four female nurses, and one additional female human resources team member, my spouse and I. I apologize, Dave. Apologies. A lot. And I am too, Jerry. The fact remains, nevertheless. It is appreciated. My gaze shifted to my estranged wife. Put on some presentable clothing and go upstairs. So please, leave my house. She stood up, her sniveling behind, and turned to head upstairs. Please don't discard me in this way. She pleaded. Oh. So you're saying that your adamant attitude of, it's my body, I'll do what I want, has undermined our marriage? The temptation was so great you wouldn't believe it. At the diner where we had coffee after the night shift, I could have slept with a young waitress. The saleswoman at the Lincoln dealership where we made our purchase was available to me. Even your sister cheated on me. But I was head over heels in love with you. Whore. That's the thanks I got. Dude, you have no place in my life. She snapped and bolted upstairs, scuffing her high-heeled shoe in the process. The living room fell silent. My daughter then volunteered, Daddy. I'll go watch her to make sure she doesn't do anything stupid. If I don't, I'll never be able to let myself be disappointed by her. Thirty minutes later, clad in sweatpants and trousers, her hair and makeup in shambles, she made her way downstairs with a suitcase. As she was leaving, my eldest son intervened. Okay, Mom, don't worry. The wedding won't conflict with your connections on the side because Adrienne and I will be planning it separately. Unless, of course, no one invites you. We had no idea how serious Dave was about dating Adrienne. But now we know. Maybe Dad will bring a new girlfriend. At the entrance door, Judith lost her bearings. Abandoned, her mother led her away. Her dad looked over at me. Is there a way to get beyond this? Despite her clear need for assistance, it appears as though nothing has transpired. She can talk to my lawyer about it. Remember, son, she loves you. What a clever way to express it, I exclaimed, while staring him down in the eye. They were all adults who had consented and were acting appropriately until it was discovered that the nice doctor had used a hospital credit card to pay for the accommodations and the food and drinks for the weekend party. This wasn't the first party, but it certainly wouldn't be the last. The hospital attempted to avoid the press, but eight of the I participants were found to be working or attending some fake official seminar or hospital event. Several marriages ended in crisis when this became public knowledge Remember that I'm just a mild-mannered aviation mechanic at heart? I filed for divorce, but I let it go on since I loved her more than my luggage to use the movie line. So she went to therapy. The kids were supportive and understood that I was trying, but it hurt so much and came out of nowhere. How could I have been so naive? Thankfully, United Airlines was kind, and I was able to get more time off work for medical reasons. As a result of the severe nursing shortage, several doctor's posts became available, and she lost her job along with everyone else. The good doctor was fired, sued, and prosecuted. Corinne also lost her job, along with her too. My wife was the latest member to be recruited into the sex club. They had been following her for some time, and Corinna had been trying to convince her that she had to do it, that it was fun, that I would never know. And that, besides, 
Many husbands like to watch their wives have sex with other men. Finally, after six months of trying to convince her, they succeeded. Concluding thoughts. Even though it took over a year, I finally came to love her and couldn't imagine my life without her. I was always wondering, would you be better off with her in your life or out of it? I kept a close eye on her and asked her a million questions about how we were doing. Whenever she spoke, I listened intently. I think I drove her crazy, but she knew that I was trying my hardest, and she loved me. God, I believed her. I filed a lawsuit against the hospital and doctor. Strathmore. I had to wait in line behind his wife's divorce case, but I was ahead of everyone else who was wronged. We got rid of him as a couple. I split my settlement with the other husbands and wives. The hospital was not so fortunate. My children and I settled out of court for six figures in a sealed settlement. The remaining plaintiffs received seven figures in sealed reparations. No one welcomed my sister-in-law. I have no idea if her parents had spoken to her yet. I was fortunate with the result. The final result. The fact that throughout the entire event, my mind was firing on all cylinders and the love and encouragement of my family and friends. I never thought I would admit it, but I may have taken my marriage for granted. Not anymore. It's been over a year, but we're finally back and the sex we have is incredible. Every now and then, she apologizes for the pain she caused and sobs with pleasure, but it gets better. I adore her, but please don't think I'm a wuss. Approximately eight months into the storm, I confronted a doctor who was leaving a gym where he regularly works out. I proceeded to brutally beat him, breaking three, count them three, fingers and crushing one of his balls. Fortunately, I was accompanied by a police officer during this ordeal. Anyway, I told him he should have worked to support himself. Perhaps he would have fought harder had he done so. You may keep your good manners and not annoy my wife. I know. It's terribly tacky.